it's another rainy day. It's this whole week, but it's another rainy day here in Waikiki. Oh boy. So, um, Mother's Day was a few days ago, and it was a bit of an emotional day for me, right? I, um, you know, as I said in my previous video, that one of my previous videos that I'm going to New York, um, going back home for the first time in uh, two and a half years. And this is the first time in my life that I'm not gonna be able to see my immediate family. I'm gonna see my cousins, I'm gonna see my aunts. You know, they're not in an organization, thank God. But um, my mother and my brother, I'm not gonna be able to see them. You know, because I came out as a full-blown apostate, which I will never regret doing. You know, I told my family the truth about the truth. Um, and of course, I had, you know, pure good intention to wake them up. Now, maybe I came off too strong. You know, but when you wake up from this cult, when you do your research and you realize that your entire life was a lie, um, yeah, when you realize that your entire life was a lie, right? You, um, you want to tell everybody. You want to tell everybody. And the minute I got reinstated, that's exactly what I did. I was trying to plant seeds, trying to wake up all my JW family and friends. You know, uh, a lot of you guys who have been following my channel for a while, you guys know that I, I was uh, interested in, a, in a, a sister in Australia, right? She reached out to me when I was in fellowship, talking about some, oh, Duran, I know we haven't talked in years, but you've been in my mind, and I hope that me and you can pursue something. And I was so happy to hear from her, right? But the minute I came out as a full-blown apostate, I told her, listen, I don't believe in this organization. This this is not real. That sister in Australia was like, oh, well, deuces. If you, if you don't want to be a part of this religion, then we can't be together, right? And my entire life flipped upside down. Um, sorry, not my entire life, but when it came to my family and my JW friends, from that aspect, things flipped upside down, right? My entire life changed. People automatically shunned me, you know, when I had pure good intentions just to wake them up. But going back to my mother, the first time in my life, and my mom is a very studious person. She's one of these JW, she knows the Bible from left to right. She knows her wash tower and awake articles. Like she, she's spiritual. My mom's like an extremely spiritual person, right? But the first time in my life, I'm asking her questions that she cannot answer. Because the first time in my life, uh, I'm now starting to think critically. And when you throw questions to Jehovah's Witnesses that they can't answer, nine times, nine times out of 10, they, uh, they run away from you. They're either gonna lie and say, oh, I'll get back to you, I'll do my research and I'll get back to you, and they never do, or they call you an apostate because you don't think like they think. You're not brainwashed like they're brainwashed. You don't easily believe like they easily easily believe so they label you as an apostate just because you're thinking critically and you're asking them questions that they cannot answer so that's exactly what happened when i got reinstated and i came out as a full-blown apostate my family my jw friends shunned me because as i said in the, the previous video that i will never ever be fake it's not in me i don't have a good poker face if something is not right, I'm not gonna just keep my mouth shut and, and go with the flow. I'm not that type of guy. If something is wrong, if I, if I see there's any type of discrepancy, I'm gonna address it. I don't care if you're an elder, I don't care if you're a CEO, I don't care if you're a governing body leader. If you're in the wrong, if you're telling lies, I'm going to address it. That's the type of person I, that I am. So once I've woken up from this cult, I address all the lies, I spread, I was, I was preaching the real truth about the truth to my JW family and friends. But I learned the hard way, you can't do that. You can't do that as a witness, as a, um, as an ex-witness, as an ex-witness, you can't, you can't be, you can't be so blunt with these people because the first thing that they're gonna see and hear is, oh, these are apostate lies. Even if you're telling, telling them the truth, right? Even if you're telling them the truth, 
all they're gonna hear is apostate lies because what you're saying is going against their beliefs. All they wanna hear is things that make their beliefs accurate, even though it's not. <laughs> so I came out full blown apostate, right? I went full speed ahead. I told everybody, guys, I love you guys. Please, please do your research so that you don't waste your entire life waiting for a pipe dream that's never gonna happen. Please do your research. I know you're gonna, I know you guys think that this is apostate lies, but it's not. I have no reason to jeopardize a paradise earth. But why would I do that? Why would I jeopardize me going to paradise if I thought this, if I thought this information wasn't accurate? If I thought this information wasn't true? Why would I jeopardize me living forever on a paradise earth? Use your head, do your research. Now, when I said that, not one person in my family did their research. Instead, they all felt like they were uh, inclined to shun me, which they did. And it pained me that my family, they're on the verge of spending the rest of their life to the day that they die, waiting for something that is never, ever gonna happen. That pained me. It pains me that I am now painted as this wicked, evil apostate all because I am telling them the truth about the truth, right? But my mom, going back to my mom once again, um, the last thing she said to me, which was about a year ago, this is a year, this is like last year, May, when this happened. She said to me, when I tried to wake her up, I tried to encourage her to do her research. She said, oh, you're now an apostate. I ha don't talk to me. Don't contact me. Don't talk to me ever again. Those were the last words I heard from my mom. But tell me why. My mom, when it, when it comes to the rapper, what's the name? Uh, uh, Fetty Wap. I think I might be pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> but Fetty Wap. My mom loves that rapper. She listens to all his songs. Every time she sees him on, on, the, um, on TV, his music video, she loves him. Oh, I love Fetty Wap. He's a great rapper. <laughs> Meanwhile, check this out. Fetty Wap just got arrested for drug charges. His songs, he rapping about sex, he rapping about drugs, he rapping about having guns and shit, right? So I'm saying to myself, my mom is shunning her oldest son for, because I was telling her the truth about the truth, which she wasn't prepared. She wasn't mentally prepared to hear that. I'm over here spreading some good news, some real good news, trying to wake her ass up. But yet she's shunning me. But on a on a flip side, she's listening to Fetty Wap. A rapper talking about drugs. A rapper who just went to prison for drugs. A rapper who who fashioned guns, talking about sex in, in all his music videos. She loves she loves some Fetty Wap. But she'll shun her, her oldest son who is trying to wake her up. And trying to help her see, help her to see that what she believes in is not the truth. And I, I, <laughs> it's like, when I dwell on this, right? When I really dwell on this shit, I said to myself, if I was fake, if I was fake and phony, and I believe in this JW bullshit, if I kept my mouth shut, if I went along with the flow, my mom would still love me. My mom would still talk to me. My brothers would still talk to me. That sister in Australia, me and her would probably be engaged or married by now. If I went along with the flow, if I kept my mouth shut, my life would be completely, completely different right now. You pay a price when you come out and you do the right thing. You pay a price. But this is what I tell people. Perspective is everything. Yeah, yeah, it was extremely depressing. It was extremely, extremely depressing when I lost all those people. I went viral on Facebook, on uh, Instagram. I told all my JW family and friends, I don't believe in this. This is not the truth, do your research. The majority of the people either blocked me or unfriended me. I'm talking about people I've known for 10, 15, 20 plus years. Blocked me like it was nothing. Unfriended me like it was nothing. So I paid, I paid a, a hefty price for coming out as an apostate, right? But. Here's one thing that people have to keep in mind. 
and this goes for you Pimos that's, that's watching this, right? You have to choose your poison. Because you're going to suffer one way or another. You're going to suffer. You're either going to suffer by coming out blunt, full speed ahead like I did. And I say, hey guys, this is not the truth. Do your research. You will see that I'm not lying. Do your research. Now, if you do that, nine times out of ten, the majority of witnesses, they're going to shun you. Some may not. Like the PMOs, the only people who are not going to shun you are the other PMOs who know that it's not the truth. That this is not the truth, right? But nine times out of ten, if you did what I did, you're going to be shunned. Because I learned the hard way. You can't not wake people up. I thought that if I was going to, you know, come out and say, guys, this is not the truth. Because I'm, I'm spitting facts. I'm speaking the truth. And you would think that people would want to hear the actual truth. And not just live in their own little fantasy make-believe, you know, land of make-believe. You, you would think that witnesses would want to hear the actual truth, that if there are lies, they would want to know about the lies, right? No, 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 no. They don't care about... No, no, no. They don't care about the actual truth. All they care about is the things that's going to keep the land of make-believe more ideal, more accurate. All they want to hear about is these, their sugarcoat lies. They want their, what they currently believe in they want, those, they want those lies to be fed. They don't care about the actual truth. And I had to learn that the hard way, right? But you pick your poison, you're either going to tell people the truth and you're going to be shunned, or you keep your mouth shut. You be a PMO, you go to all the meetings, you keep your JW family and friends, even though you know it's not the truth, right? But here's the sad part. Here's where the poison comes to play. You lose, you miss out on life. You miss out on real friends. You miss out on real opportunities. You miss out on people that can actually love you for who you are. So you, it's like you're damn, it's a catch-22. You're damn, you're damn either way. You either say that this is not the truth and you're shunned, or you keep your mouth shut to keep conditional fake and phony family and friends that only love you conditionally, that don't really love you. They love the ideal of having you in their life. Only if you believe in what they believe in. But that's not real love. That's fake love. And like I said, one thing about me, I will never, ever be fake. So I don't regret coming out as a full-blown apostate. I'm going to New York City soon. And um, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt me that I'm not going to be able to see my, my, uh, my mom and my brother. That's going to hurt, right? But it would hurt more if I cut my mouth shut and, I, and if I let my family believe, believe these lies to the day that they die. That would be worse. That would be worse. Because now, if my family, if they ever do wake up, now they're going to know that I was speaking facts. Now they're going to know that I was telling them the truth. I pray that they wake up. That's on them. If they choose to wake up or not, that's entirely up to them. But you can't go wrong by being honest and blunt with people. If they don't want to, if they don't want to heed the message that you're that you're speaking, as long as you're telling people the truth, you cannot go wrong. If they want to shun you, guess what? That's on them. If they want to waste their life waiting for a pipe dream that's never going to happen, guess what? That is entirely up to them. But me speaking the truth and being shunned by speaking the truth, I don't regret that for one minute. And my heart goes out to all you PMOs out there. I can't tell you guys what to do. I know a lot of you guys are PMO for different reasons, for financial circumstances, um, emotionally, mentally. Not a lot of people can handle being shunned. I can handle it. You know, I'm a strong-minded person, but at the same time, I'm human at the end of the day. You know, I still want my, of course, I want my mother in my life. Of course, I want my brothers in my life, right? But I can't, I'm not going to be fake just to keep that relationship going. I'm not going to do that. So it is what it is. But so all you PMOs, I encourage you, please, uh, you think about the long term. Long term, you want people that's going to love you for who you are. Long term, you want to be able to live your life to the fullest. And I don't mean that. I don't mean I'm not saying to do drugs or engage in a lot of sex with people or become an alcoholic or party, do nothing crazy. I don't mean it like that. When I say live your life to the fullest, I mean 
Be your true authentic self. Do what makes you happy. You can't do that as a witness. As a PMO, you have to hide behind the, uh, I guess you could say avatar. Yeah, you have to you have pretty much be a, become a freaking avatar. You have to hide behind a shell and put on a front just to please people. Keep in mind, we have one life to live, guys. We have one life to live. So I don't regret coming out as a full-blown apostate. I don't, I don't regret it for one day. You have to pick your poison. You either be your true authentic self and tell people, hey, listen, I don't care that I don't care if you believe in, I don't care that you believe, you believe that this is true. I did my research. I don't think this is the truth. If you're gonna shun me, shun me, but I'm gonna live my life. Or you be a PMO and your life is, you, 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 your life is just kind of wasted day by day, week by month, year by year. Your life is wasted, surrounded by conditional people that don't love you for who you are. To me, that's the waste of life. Being in the presence of people that don't really love you for who you are, they love the idea of having you in their life only, only if you believe in what they believe in. That's not real love, that's fake. That's phony as hell. That's phony. But um, sorry, I, I, this is a little rant. I'm just venting on this video. I'm venting and I'm a bit in my feelings today because I'm going back to New York and it's sad that my mother is shunning me for, tell, for me speaking out and telling the truth about her her cult. But on the flip side, she will listen to a rapper like Fetty Rap. If, if she saw Fetty Rap at a restaurant or outside, she would run up to him, oh, Fetty Rap, I love your music. I, I love you, can I, get a, can I take a picture with you? Can I get an autograph? Meanwhile, he's over here rapping about sex, drugs. He went to jail for drugs, for drug possession. But meanwhile, my mom, he, she loves some Fetty Rap. But on the flip side, she is shunning her son who is speaking the real truth about the truth. Somebody, please make that make sense.